Greetings to you from me, Colin, and the rest of the Southern Counties staff team. Well, it's a beautiful day here as I record this, and perhaps you've been enjoying getting out into the fresh air. Uh, at last, some warm, sunny weather this spring. My wife Alison and I have certainly been doing that and we've been enjoying having a go at something new. We've been trying out paddle boarding and we didn't realise that it's a bit harder than it looks. And we didn't realise how much we don't know about the way the water works and the way that uh, the currents behave and all the things that we should be aware of if we're going to have a go at this seemingly simple water sport. An example of that is just recently we went and had a really good time, although it was a bit breezy, on Christchurch Harbour, which is a very large inlet fed by the River Stour and Avon. Uh, it's mainly shallow, it looks incredibly benign, and... Uh, it had been a bit hard going because it had been a bit breezy and uh, you realise that if you stand up you act a bit like a sail and if you're going against the wind that's hard. But uh, we were near the end of our time and what we didn't realise is that as we came back to shore we got quite near to a major current and the tide had started to go out. My wife Alison was able to get to the quayside and uh, be safe there. Uh, I was further over and unwittingly I'd got drawn into what's known as the run or the race, which is the narrow inlet of water out of which all of the, uh, the two rivers and the harbour empty every time the tide goes out. Uh, it's notoriously difficult to get back up if you're sailing or in, even in a motorboat uh, once the tide is going out. It's a very narrow piece of water. As I look round to see that Alison was OK, I fell off the paddleboard uh, I then discovered that it's really, really difficult to get back on a paddleboard, especially in fast moving water. Uh, I had to whisper to myself, don't panic. Thankfully, uh, I made it back onto the board kneeling and was able through some uh, extremely vigorous paddling to get to a place of safety and rejoin Alison. But it made us realise how much we don't know. And a bit more respectful of the water. Yesterday we went back on uh, one of the rivers that feeds the Christ Christchurch Harbour, the River Avon, and uh, had a lovely, uh, enjoyable time. But even then we realised that what looks really benign and simple and straightforward from the bank or from a bridge, actually there are all sorts of eddies and currents going on, even in uh, a little river like the River a Avon, the, the bit that we were on at that time. Uh, you even have to watch out for how shallow it's getting. You've got a fin at the back of the paddleboard. If that catches something, it will just throw you straight off into the water. All those things we realised we had to be aware of. So we're just learning our way. It's been great because you become part of a little community of people that use the water and they give you tips and uh, hints as to where to go and what to watch out for and, and so on. Of course, there's a whole online community as well. Not knowing. We still live at a time of uncertainty. We don't know, even though we're beginning to go back to our gatherings for worship in different ways, we don't know really what effect all of this pandemic and lockdown will have had on how we are as church, what we do as church. We don't know. We're uncertain. And as I remember that, I think about how often it is that the people of God are uncertain and don't know the way forward. Uh, to uh, take the title of that uh, brilliant uh, little book, um, uh, How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You're Going, that is a common experience for people in leadership as well as people in churches and other organisations. So I'm reassured by the fact that in some ways there is a bit of this where God wants us not to think that we know it all, to not know. I wonder if that's there partly with the Apostle Peter. When he has denied Jesus uh, after the resurrection, after this huge catch of fish, you'll know perhaps that there's this famous story where he's restored. He's asked, do you love me? 
And Simon Peter says, yes, three times. And Jesus, uh, rather than saying, I forgive you, restores him and takes him into a role that he has for him for the future. What doesn't make sense is, given that there's just been this huge catch of fish, given that previously our understanding is that Simon Peter had another experience of having a great big catch of fish, and Jesus saying to him, I will make you a fisher, I will make you fishers of people, of men. Why doesn't Jesus say, didn't I tell you you'd be a fisher of people? Instead, Jesus actually says effectively, you're going to be a shepherd, feed my sheep, tend the lambs, take care of my sheep. Now, Peter knew all the nuances of the currents, the way that fish behave, all of those things in terms of being attentive to the movements of the water and the clouds and the storms and the sea and so on. All those things he could draw on and bring into the metaphor of being a fisher of people. He couldn't do that in the same way once Jesus says you're going to be a shepherd because he knew of shepherding. He'd seen it from the side. He'd seen it in the countryside. Everybody knew about shepherds in one sense, but they didn't really know what it was like to be a shepherd. Simon Peter was invited into a world, into a a role, into a metaphor, if you like, an image, which actually uh, he couldn't say, I'm familiar with this, I know how to do it. And of course, that would be writ large on the day of Pentecost. The first bit is a really good bit. It's the the fisher of people. He preaches this uh, sermon inspired by the Holy Spirit, explaining what's happening as the Spirit is given telling about how Jesus, who's been rejected and crucified, is the one who's risen and is the one to trust in and to be baptised into his name. All of that happens, but then the hard work begins with the 3,000, either those that have gathered for Pentecost, some of whom will live in Jerusalem, some of whom will go back elsewhere. Now the hard work begins. Now what do we do? How do we do this feeding, taking care of, tending thing? That was when Simon Peter was pushed to the edge of his limits, thankfully with the other apostles, the other disciples, as together they trusted the Spirit's guidance. And it's precisely the Spirit's guidance that we're invited to trust in as well. Earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus has said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The spirit who will remind them of who Jesus is and what Jesus has said and therefore how to proceed, even though it won't be straightforward. It will always be challenging. The spirit who will guide them into the truth that they need. That's the promise I need today in my not knowing. Perhaps it's the promise and the encouragement that you need. It's all that Jesus does offer because he doesn't invite us into a familiar place where we simply do everything we did before, even though some of that is right. Some of that's helpful. We do need to return to finding ways to gather with each other before God encouraging and spurring each other on as the people of God in everyday life. But there are bits we don't know, and that's the place, always the place, where we know that we can't say, well, we just, we've got the wisdom. We have to trust in the Spirit's guidance. He will be with you, and he will be in you, is the promise. And we trust and we believe that's particularly when we gather together with our fellow leaders, those that we serve with, with the the rest of our church. Together we discern the mind of Christ, the wisdom that's needed, and together we sense the way in which, just as it did on the day of Pentecost, God is going to open things up with those that we seek to serve. May God bless you for your not knowing and through your not knowing as you seek wisdom for the future.